Hello everyone and welcome back to part 2 of the e-bike series on this lovely sunny morning. So I'm going to continue exactly where I left off last time and I'm going to start by adding the rear shock. So let's get started with that. Now I think just for argument's sake I'm going to put this rear shock back on even though it doesn't fit simply so I can get wheels on. Because uh, once the wheels on it might be a bit easier to work on and I can put the kickstand and yeah. Here's the bike as it is, and here is the front wheel from my previous bike. So hopefully this will be as simple as lift it up. And now it's time for definitely the more challenging wheel. Because this thing, I forgot how much it weighed, and it is quite a bit. Now the seller of this did actually advise me to use a torque arm even though the metal was like ridiculously thick. I found that it can output like 120 newton meters of torque which for a motorbike uh, or well yeah any kind of thing is a uh, is fair bit. You can actually see kind of how the metals are actually bent especially if I do it like that. And you know again this thing is kind of like 6 millimeter thick brass and it still managed to bend it which shows kind of the pure power that's in can output. The brake disc matches with where the brake caliper is on that. Let's just get them over there. Right, now it's literally a matter of millimetres, but as much as I don't want to, I'm going to deploy the tactic from my old bike of having the bar and then tightening it to make it wider. So update on the bike, I gave Halfords a call uh, about the um, widening of the fork. Basically they said they don't have any specialist tools to do it, uh, so my best bet is just to keep on doing what I'm doing with the, um, with the bolt and everything. Um, because it's made of steel, the whole, whole thing is, uh, they said yes it is going to kind of contract when you try and push it apart, so basically my best bet is to push it as far apart as I can, so that when it does contract, hopefully it's by a lesser amount. So, guess got to keep going with this. Um, I changed out a washer, uh, so the nut for a big one there, so yeah. Little log started at 157, did five turns, 172, another five turns, 181, and just now three turns bring us up to 189. So, <laughs> who knows what it's going to be when we relieve the pressure, but. off and have a little look what we're at. We are at, oh, come and have a look at this. That's starting at one. We are at one, six, four. Now that doesn't get it on. I don't know what will. So let's get the wheel on. Yeah, I'm just about to find out. So obviously I've done it, uh, I'm really happy about that, uh, I didn't think it was going to work quite that easily but it did, fingers crossed that <laughs> trend continues. I'm still quite confused as to how that wheel can be so wide because I didn't know they made them wider than 150 and it's only like a few millimetres wider so I'm like well why didn't they just make it 150 but I've asked the supplier what the width, what they claim the width is. Uh, so yeah, it's done now. So I'm gonna put the rear back on and uh, hopefully kind of make it look a bit more like a bike. Right, so this is where the key switch is going. Uh, it's got some tabs on it. I'm hoping it will just be a simple task of 
that. Ah, there we go. And that. Right, this is where the charging port is going. It has these little rubber seals in it, so I'm going to put one through um, on that side. Uh, so that goes on like that. Um, and then finally that nut like that. And that's all nice and waterproof. Obviously it's kind of direct in the splash zone, so I'd probably get a mud guard, but yeah, there we go. So there we have it. That is e-bike. Uh, version 3, uh, first part of it. So we've managed to assemble the frame um, and I am loving the look. Uh, hit the like button if you're also loving the look of it so far. So got the rear wheel attached, got the shock absorber, got the two sections mounted together, got the saddle attached. In fact a note on that, I, uh, I attached some masking tape to it uh, just to make it a bit wider so I had a good seal and now it's nice and firm. Attach the seat itself. Uh, attach the uh, key switch and uh, charging port under there. Attach the front forks. Uh, attach the handlebars, got the bearings pressed of course. Uh, well I need to order some parts. Uh, I've got a big list of all the bits that I'm gonna need. The, probably the next big thing I'm gonna order is a Sabaton uh, 72 volt 180 amp controller and now I'm going to be using 48 volt batteries but theoretically theoretically uh, power between 7 and 11 kilowatts which on this kind of frame is absolutely bonkers definitely going to need some torque arms on there but we'll get to that at a later date. One thing I did have to do was you probably can't see it but I added a washer in between the uh, motor and the housing because the disc brake was rubbing on the frame you can, uh, you can see that it's still a very, very uh, tight fit, but there are just a few millimetres of, uh, clear out of, focus, of clearance there. So when I come round to put the brakes on, that should all be fine. Okay, so got the VESC mounted down there, got the batteries very crudely in there, just supported by some duct tape, got a little adapter made up and then I'm using the e-bike analyst just to give me some uh, basic uh, whatever readings. Really smooth, actually. I mean, if I go over there. 